this is a genus Alaphoglossum, which means deer or stag tongue. And so it's got this single entire blade. And these are very common up in the canopy. And there are several species of Alaphoglossum here at La Selva. This one happens to be a, a Herminieri. But most of them have this basic look to them. And this is not a typical fern, but in, in the sense of the other ones that we looked at initially. But there is an Alaphoglossum that I'm about to show you that I think is my favorite fern of any fern I've ever seen. And that's this little parsley thing right here. This is the same genus as this other Alaphoglossum that you just looked at. And I, I actually think the common name for this is the um, parsley fern. But they've got these amazing little leaves. This one is just unfurling. This was a fiddlehead a little while ago. And I see them in the forest growing on rotten logs. But the guide to ferns says that they also grow up in the canopy. But they seem to be quite sensitive to desiccation. They, you need to keep these nice and moist, and they don't like being out in the direct sunlight. Another fern here in this same little pot is something that I wouldn't have originally said looked like a typical fern when I was first learning about ferns. And, but it's quite a common fern, and they grow on the trunks of trees in the forest. And I learned this as dicranoglossum, but I think it's been changed now and submerged into another genus, Pleopeltis. But this is a very beautiful little fern. And one last fern, no, two more. This right here is a fern in the genus Danaea, which is in a family before they changed all the families around, that is considered the most primitive fern family uh, in the world, I believe. This is the Meritaceae family. And so here's a nice little leaf unfurling. It's kind of halfway unfurled. So these, I'm just covering a really wide spectrum of phylogeny here in no particular order. But then let me show you this fern here. This is in the genus Tectaria. And we've got seven or eight species of Tectaria here at La Selva. And this one, I actually asked Orlando yesterday. I said, Orlando, is this a fern? It just, it looks like the leaf of a flowering plant. It, but if you look at the underside of the pinny or the little leaflets, you can see that this one has the sori or those little dots that where the spores are. So ferns are characterized by the gametophyte and sporophyte generation, so two independent phases of life, the unfurling of the fronds as fiddleheads, but also the important thing about ferns is that they don't have fruits and flowers. So if you see something that's got fruits and flowers, it's not a fern. That is a quick review of many ferns that I think don't look like ferns. And then finally, something that's called a fern that isn't a fern. So people, this is part of the group known as house plantaceae in the United States. In other words, people, a lot of people have asparagus ferns in their houses and they make flowers and they make fruit. So this is not a fern, it's a real asparagus. So this is an angiosperm or a flowering plant. So this was just a little stroll through the morphological diversity of ferns, emphasizing the ferns that you might not think really are ferns if you encountered them in your walks through the forest. <music>